Hey everyone and welcome back to another GBF Relink video. If you've been farming in the endgame, you're probably familiar with or have done some AFK farming yourself. It's an excellent way to farm quests that you don't want to personally do or materials you need tons of, but it can take a long time if your team isn't properly optimized. In today's guide, I'll be sharing some recommendations regarding skill builds and sigils for the AI. With a few adjustments, your AI can blast even proud difficulty missions in 2-3 minutes. There's a lot to share and so much AFKing to do, so without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so with a few exceptions, the AI characters will be using standard, high damage player builds. This means that most of them will be using their awakened terminus weapons, have max damage cap, damage to reach the cap, 100% crit chance, war elemental, and since the AI perfect dodges almost every hit, glass cannon. The negative of Glass Cannon is generally not an issue for the AI, but keep in mind that characters with Stout Heart are more likely to tank hits here and there, so if you notice your character is getting dizzy often, that might be the reason. If so, you can either remove Stout Heart, or swap out Glass Cannon for another Sigil. Next, I recommend prioritizing at least one source of Link Together and Nimble Onslaught. Link Together greatly increases Link Attack, SPA, and CBA damage. Nimble Onslaught gives SPA gauge generation and reduced skill cooldowns on perfect dodges, which means that it procs frequently in the hands of the AI. Since Link Attacks, SPAs, and CBAs are a large chunk of their damage, and the bots use skills on cooldown, these two traits go a long way towards speeding up your clears. If you have more sigil slots, supplemental damage and uplift can be used to round out your build. Now let's move on to character specifics. The AI will perform fine with most standard skill builds, but in some cases, you'll want to make minor adjustments. Also, certain characters don't effectively use both class sigils, so I'll go over which ones are unnecessary and which to take. We'll be covering the majority of the cast, with emphasis on stronger picks that I personally have experience with, but it's really fine to use any... Uh, most characters. Remember, these are AI builds for AFK farming, not for use as general teammates. For Rosetta, I always take Rose Tycoon and Spiral Rose to start. For the other two slots, I usually take Love Lost and Bouquet. I take Bouquet over Iron Maiden as the AI has difficulty getting value out of the Iron Maiden buff, and Stoutheart doesn't work great with Glass Cannon. The ability to reposition and level the Roses is great against mobile bosses, plus the extra heal and debuff removal go a long way towards keeping you alive. Love Loss is generally decent, but if you find your player character is taking a lot of damage in a particularly difficult mission, you can take Rose Barrier to try to mitigate some. For her sigils, make sure you give her Rose's Blooming since it is a big boost to her DPS. Rose's Perfusion can be taken if paired with a good secondary offensive trait, but I'd pass it in lieu of another sigil if it's a solo trait. Eugen is pretty flexible regarding which skills he can take, but my go-to build is Venom Grenade, Sumarok, Armor Piercing Round, and Paralyzing Bullet. Depending on the fight, you can swap Paralyzing Bullet for Detonator, but I'm lazy so I just stick to one build. On fights that have a lot of random damage going out, such as Piatae's Lasers, Matic Armor's Icicles, and so on, you should avoid Detonator as it isn't uncommon for him to get stuck between charging it and dodging repeatedly. Healing Bullet is a great option to tech in if you find yourself getting downed often, and Disruptor can be used in fights like White Worm so you can dispel immediately, and the damage on it is decent for how fast the animation is. With regards to his class sigils, Vision is unnecessary since Eugen never enters Sniper Stance. Insight, however, is very important since it's hard to cap the damage without it, so make sure you take it. EL runs a standard player skill build with one exception. Take Freeze fire, and lightning, but leave out flowery 7. Unlike Eugen's detonator, which can be taken depending on the fight, I suggest never using flowery 7 for the AI, as the bot will usually raw full charge every time, meaning she often gets stuck in an infinite loop of attempting to cast and dodging. Instead, swap it out for gravity well and her performance overall should improve. For her class sigils, EO benefits greatly from aspiration and savvy, so I recommend equipping both. Caglio uses more of a support skill set and deals damage with combos and finishers, since she doesn't use her charged attack collapse. This means disruption for the spell, reinforce for the healing, Rizomata for the insta res, 
and Phantasmagoria for that little oomph in damage and defensives. If you're fully capped on damage and crit and feel the defensive buff isn't worth it, you can swap this for Pain Train. Because she doesn't use her Collapse, Founder's Strategy is a wasted slot, and I recommend only using Founder's Truth. Narmaya uses the standard player build of Kyoka Suigetsu, Satsuna, Dance of Pink Petals, and Transient. You can swap Transient with Apex of Nothingness if you want to slow and dispel, but Transient will generally do more damage. Because her damage output is largely dependent on RNG and Butterfly Generation, I recommend taking both of her class sigils, Grace and Valor. Rackham becomes a glorified skill spammer since the AI isn't particularly consistent with his autos or bullseye blast. I recommend taking Spitfire, Bullet Hail, Collateral Damage, and Slackshot or Double Tap for the last slot. If you don't have a healer to offset his occasional self-harm from Collateral Damage, just take Slackshot and Double Tap. Even though he doesn't auto or bullseye blast frequently, if you have both class sigils on an Awakening Plus, or roll them with good secondary damage traits, go ahead and use them. My experience with Catalina Bot has been pretty positive, but I've read reports of people saying she doesn't do much and has been benched, so your mileage may vary. I actually run my standard build for her, which is Enchanted Lance, Frozen Blade, Azure Sword, and Light Wall. She does the Ares buffed Team Light Wall about 80% of the time or so for me, but if you don't like the inconsistency or want her to do more damage, swap it out for Heal or Winner's Reign. Although it's generally not great with the AI, I run Stout Heart on her so that the Ares windows don't get interrupted. You can offset her damage taken by taking Heal or using another character that has a Heal. In regards to her class sigils, I've tried using Guardian's Honor, but I've had trouble evaluating the efficacy of this sigil. Additionally, Quick Cooldown and Cascade already work together to reduce her cooldowns. As a result, I only take Guardian's Conviction in my AI build. Zeta has the potential to do amazing damage in the hands of the AI, but requires some unique adjustments. You can use the standard build of Infinite Wonders, Vengeful Flames, and Wing Clipper, but make sure to remove Spear of Arvest because the AI does less aerial loops with it equipped. Alternatively, some prefer to use the Less Is More Sigil and unequip all her skills, which maximizes her aerial loop uptime. Zeta has the added benefit of not needing either of her class sigils because the AI is able to perform her aerials without Crimson Flight, and the value from Crimson Cloud is low, especially if you're geared and already hitting damage cap. Id is another character with high potential, but needs the support of his team to get there. The innate Stout Heart in his Dragon Form means that he tends to eat a lot of damage, and although he has Drain built into the kit, I would still recommend a heal of some sort on your team to pair with him. For skills, I take Never Enough, Unbound, Arcadia, and Ragnarok form. And for his class sigils, I recommend taking both Ignition for the damage cap increase in Drain, and Foundation to help him enter Dragon form faster. For Percival, I take both Macht and Zerheisen because less time spent running around is more time blasting. Tarmoe usually has good value, and for the last slot, I take Fire and Griff. If it's a particularly mobile boss, where Percy is moving around a lot and not getting full value on his Tarmoe, you can swap it out for Rolter Vibel or Royal Authority. For his class sigils, Procession is terrific since the AI regularly runs around while charging, but Ambition is largely wasted since the AI will generally choose to dodge over using charged parries. Lancelot has a couple skills you could swap in depending on the fight, but I tend to just stick with Blade Impulse, Southern Cross, Kartsfinger, and Blauer Dolch. As with other abilities, the AI does not strategically time his CC, so his Glaciate timing is hit or miss. However, CC is almost always a net positive in team damage, so I take it. For class sigils, Oath isn't particularly great because the AI will usually use the standard dodge over his Twin Blade Dance, and Glory should only be considered if it's paired with a strong attack trait secondary, as it's weaker than most attack sigils such as Tyranny, Life on the Line, and even his analogous straight combo booster. Siegfried has decent damage, but his strengths are his absolute top shelf buffs that he brings to the team. Take Uwe to help him stick to targets, and Verdangen for the defense down to increase SBA and CBA damage. Next, take Salvatore's debuff immunity to mitigate DOT and give the team more sustain in the form of Drain. Whilst active, your party will be immune to all debuffs including Slow, Glaciate, and Blight to name a few, and make him an excellent pick for farming Black Worm and Manic Armor. 
Finally, you can take Mirage or Nail and Nav for the final slot, depending on whether you want the defense buff or the damage and stun. For his sigils, make sure you take Ingenuity for that sweet CDR, as the AI is pretty good at perfect executions. Dominance doesn't get full value due to the AI preferring to dodge over eating hits, so if you only care about damage, you can swap it out for something else. Alternatively, I've been trying an interesting non-glass cannon build that can run both class sigils along with Cascade and Quick Cooldown for massive cooldown reduction. Combined with Stout Heart, Siegfried will opt to continue attacking and maintain high buff uptime. If you'd like the extra damage of Glass Cannon, you can swap out Stout Heart and Dominance with Glass Cannon and Nimble Onslaught. Either way, you should give all of these a try and pick the one that seems right for your team. I haven't personally tried Vayne, Charlotta, Fairy, Yorderha, or the Captain, but they should still perform well given proper builds, so don't let that stop you from using them. Gandagoza and Vassaraga perform decently against immobile bosses like Proto Bahamut, but in most scenarios, they really struggle to output their damage due to the slow nature of their kits. They're still extremely fun to use on Proto Bahamut, but if you're looking to build your first all-star AFK team, I'd advise spending your resources elsewhere first. That's it for me today. Let me know what characters and teams you use to AFK farm, along with any thoughts and feedback down below. I love hearing from you guys, and I try my best to respond as soon as possible. By the way, I use Maggie's Relink Damage Calculator to collect a lot of my data, so if you want to do some testing yourself, make sure you check it out. I've put a link to both the original Reddit thread and the spreadsheet down in the description below. Thanks for watching, have fun, and I'll see you next time.